If you're losing hair, you probably have heard of the topical medication or treatment called Rogaine, AKA Minoxidil. I talk about this treatment for hair thinning frequently on my social media channel. And I thought I would take this opportunity to make a longer YouTube video to talk about how it works, which type of hair thinning is best used for, how to use it, what to expect when you are using it, as well as some other tips and hacks on using topical monoxidil to not only improve hair thinning, but also eyebrow density and facial hair growth. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have a passion about educating on skin, hair, and nail care content. And today we're talking about a very popular medication called Minoxidil, AKA Rogaine. Now, if you are experiencing hair thinning or have been on this hair loss journey, you're probably very familiar with Minoxidil. But for those who are not, Minoxidil is a treatment, an ingredient, a medication that dermatologists have been using for over 30 plus years to treat concerns of hair thinning. Now, it has been around a medicine for much longer time, it's actually initially used as a high blood pressure treatment medication. Now, Minoxidil recently have gained quite a bit of popularity thanks to a New York Times article about oral Minoxidil, which we as dermatologists prescribe for treatment of different types of hair thinning. So as I mentioned earlier, Minoxidil has been used in medicine for many years. It is a, what we call a vasodilator. So it kind of opens up the blood vessels a little bit and thereby how it works in treating high blood pressure. We actually don't know exactly how minoxidil works for treating hair thinning, but we do know that number one, because of the visodilitation effect, it may increase blood flow to the scalp and thereby, you know, bring nutrients and growth factors to the scalp to encourage hair growth. We also have seen that minoxidil will change the ion concentrations within cells. And actually minoxidil has been shown to number one, shorten the telogen phase. So the resting phase that occurs before hair shedding. So we shorten that. So more of your hair is transitioned to what's called the antigen or the growing phase. So basically giving your hair longer time, allowing it to grow and instead of shedding. So all of that together, we think is how topical as well as oral minoxidil works for hair thinning. Other thing for minoxidil is that it doesn't work in everyone, which is true. And some individuals who have said, I've used it for so long, doesn't work. The reason is that minoxidil is actually not the active form that takes effects in helping with hair thinning. Minoxidil actually has to be converted to what's called minoxidil sulfate. And that is the active form that acts on hair follicles to induce all those changes. And that conversion is done by a specific enzyme called sulfotransferase that we have in our parts of our body like liver, but it's also present in our hair follicles. Now, the interesting thing about this enzyme is there is a large variability and um, genetic variability in particular and the activity of this enzyme. What that means is some people's enzyme can be very active while some individuals aren't as active, which makes sense. If your enzyme is active, you're going to get more conversion of minoxidil to the active form and thereby it's going to work better. And so for individuals who don't see a response to topical minoxidil, you know, certainly it could be the way you're using, but most likely it's because of that lower activity enzyme level that is really leading to sub optimal response and you know improvements. Now, when it comes to minoxidil, topically is available over the counter and is really one of the most effective over the counter products slash treatments that you can use to address concerns of hair thinning without a prescription. Now, minoxidil sometimes is also known as Rogaine because Rogaine is really the brand, the only FDA approved brand of minoxidil for hair thinning for men and women. However, you can find many different brands, including generic drugstore brands of minoxidil at drugstores as well as Sephora. So there are lots of different options now. Now, when it comes to topical minoxidil, which is what I really wanna focus on today. Now, certainly if you want me to make a video all about oral minoxidil, how I prescribe the side effects, please let me know in the comments below. But today we're mostly going to focus on topical minoxidil because that's what you guys have access to. Now, when it comes to topical minoxidil, you can find it in two different formulations, the 2% as well as the 5%. Furthermore, you can find it in different formulations. Minoxidil comes in a liquid solution as well as a foam that has more of a mousse-like texture. Now, when you look at the 5%, predominantly Rogaine's version of 5% for men, you will see this warning say, do not use 
abuse on women. And I've gotten so many questions from my followers on social media, like, what is up with this? Like, what does this mean? Is it not safe? Is it dangerous? No, it's only because Rogaine as a brand has a patent on the 5% minoxidil for men and to be used on men only, which is why you will also see that Rogaine has a 5% formulation for women that is exactly the same, but you will notice that there is a significant price difference, meaning there's actually a significant cost, higher cost to the women's formulation. So I tell all my patients, both concentrations are safe to use. Both formulations are fine to use. It just depends on your preference. And sometimes some one individual may actually do better with you know one formulation than the other. But in general, when you look at the different concentrations, whether it's 2% versus 5%, we know from large scale studies that 5% does work better for men and women. So what I tell my patients and my followers on social media is if you are going to pick minoxidil and use it for hair thinning, go with the cheapest 5%. And I personally like and recommend the foam formulation because because number one, the foam applies a little bit nicer. It doesn't drip down the face as readily and sometimes that can cause undesired hair growth on the face if the solution sticks on your face and doesn't get washed away, wiped off. And two, in that solution formulation, the liquid contains alcohol, it can be drying and irritating on the scalp. And furthermore, often contains propylene glycol, which is a necessary ingredient for the vehicle formulation. But some individuals can actually have allergic contact dermatitis to that uh, propylene glycol in the solution. So my go-to recommendation, unless individuals have used the solution as tolerating it, if somebody's new to Rogaine, I recommend getting the cheapest, most affordable 5% foam. So minoxidil is really only approved for male female pattern hair thinning. However, off label is a dermatologist because it's really one of the only available and fairly effective topical treatments without a prescription. I encourage all of my patients with different types of hair thinning to try minoxidil if they're willing and able to. So the other most common type of hair thinning I recommend minoxidil for is what we call telogen influvium. So often that's stress related hair thinning, whether it's to COVID, to illness, or to post postpartum hair thinning. Certainly other medical types of hair loss, like for example, alopecia areata, once a patient is on a good medical treatment regimen, certainly minoxidil may encourage hair to grow back faster. But in general, because topical minoxidil is easily available and fairly benign, low risk treatment, I do encourage all of my hair loss patients, regardless of the underlying cause, to try minoxidil. Now, what to expect when using topical minoxidil? First and foremost, you should apply it once a day to where you are experiencing hair thinning. Now that could be localized temple or the top of the head, or if you're thinning all over, apply it all over. It's technically used once a day. However, I've had patients, I have definitely seen better enhanced results when it's used twice a day. So it's one of those things where once a day is really the bare minimum. And if you're able to, cause it sometimes is a lot of work applying these treatments, do use it twice a day. Now you do have to use it for at least three to six months, which is a really long time, but that is the time period that you do need to dedicate to consistently before you start to see results. The other kind of scary thing with topical minoxidil is because it shifts hair to the antigen phase of the hair cycle, putting more hair into the growing phase, that shift in the hair cycle, what we call synchronization of hair into the antigen phase, does actually cause a more aggressive shedding in the beginning, which can be very traumatic and scary for individuals who are already experiencing hair loss. And the reason that's happening is we all have only a finite of hair follicles that we are born with. And a certain percentage is in the growing phase and a certain percentage is in the resting and shedding phase. And old hair has to shed for new hair to grow in. So when you have more active shedding to encourage more hair growth, that means you have to push hair that is in the resting shedding phase into the growth cycle. So that means actually shedding more before you grow. And so that can be very traumatic, but understand that not everybody experienced this. If you do, it's very common and it will stop once you continue using it. And for me, when I actually have patients have that experience, it's actually a good sign because it means 
means minoxidil is working. You just have to get through that somewhat stressful and traumatic experience, but it actually means it's working. So one question that I always get is, do I have to use minoxidil forever? So it, the answer is it depends. It depends on the type of hair loss you're addressing. For androgenetic hair loss, so male and female pattern hair loss, because this is a progressive and chronic type of hair loss, you do have to keep using it if you are noticing improvements of less thinning and hair regrowth. However, for like more temporary hair shedding, so like stress induced, maybe COVID or postpartum, you really need to just use it until you're in a happy place and then you can stop. Now, once you stop, the other question is like, am I gonna lose all the hair or what is my hair density gonna feel like? I'll describe it as if it's for the temporary type of shedding and you stop minoxidil, your hair may not feel as full as you were when you're on minoxidil, but you're not going to lose all of the hair that you've grown on minoxidil compared to if you have male and female pattern hair loss you will lose pretty much everything that you've grown while using minoxidil if you stop now as i mentioned earlier because of that enzyme variability in individuals only about 40 to 50 percent of people using minoxidil will notice a significant improvement now that improvement could vary also meaning it could just be the halting of hair thinning to hopefully hair growth, but not everyone is going to have the same results. Some people may well no will notice stop shedding and that is all they experience. And once they stop minoxidil, they will see increased shedding versus some individuals will not only see less hair shedding, but also will have hair regrowth. So the response is also variable, but understand that only about half of the individuals who use minoxidil consistently will actually see a clinical response. So if you feel like if you use minoxidil consistently for good three to six months, you have absolutely seen no improvement. This is where you want to see a dermatologist talk about other options, including prescription medications, oral medications, as well as in office procedures and other modalities that may be more helpful to you. Another way that you may potentially improve the efficacy of topical minoxidil is tretinoin. And you certainly may have seen this being talked about on social media. So tretinoin can be used with topical minoxidil, although you have to be very cautious of irritation. Now, we actually don't know why tretinoin improves minoxidil outcome. Some people think there are the speculation that tretinoin may improve the penetration of minoxidil, but more studies are suggesting that tretinoin may actually improve the enzyme activity, so thereby more conversion of minoxidil to the active form and thereby better results. Now one question is, I, I get all times like, how do I use the two together? And to be honest with you, there isn't like a true standard, not like, you know, we know that tretinoin must be used at night, but when it comes to how to pair the two it's just really what works for you so that way you're able to use the two together and minimize irritation so i say you can certainly put them on at the same time you can put on your tretinoin first if you're using the full minoxidil or say put on your minoxidil liquid first and then put on tretinoin another way that you can use it is apply your tretinoin at night and use your minoxidil in the morning so regardless of how you combine these two what you just want to be aware of is because minoxidil in general can be irritating for some individuals can be very irritating on the scalp. If you are going to add on tretinoin, you really want to use small amount and go slow. So consider like you would with your skin, maybe starting off only two to three times a week at most and gradually building up the tolerance throughout the next couple weeks as tolerated. Lastly, this has been all over social media, microneedling may help to enhance the penetration of topical minoxidil. Now, as a dermatologist, I don't recommend doing home microneedling because number one, these devices are often not deep enough enough where you get to get into the hair follicles to have that effective penetration. And two, when done incorrectly, it can lead to a lot of irritation and infection. However, you can certainly see a provider for microneedling and then put on the minoxidil after that. Often in office devices are going to be deeper and more effective. So that is another option. I just do not recommend home microneedling devices purely because of how they work and the theoretical risk that I have seen in, uh, in clinic that can come out of these home treatments. And lastly, one cool thing with minoxidil is you can actually use it to improve eyebrow density and facial hair in men in particular. Now, I do not recommend it for the eyelashes because it probably is very irritating on the eyes and has not been tested to be used around the eyes, but certainly you can use it for eyebrows. And I've had patients who have had 
good improvements of their eyebrow density by using minoxidil and similarly facial hair so where you want facial hair or say for men that have want more volume of fullness to their beard you can certainly apply it directly on the skin once or twice a day for good results and again here for both areas i still recommend the foam formulation because it's just easier to apply and again the it does not contain alcohol in which is present in the liquid that can be irritating on skin. And one trick for the eyebrow is you can actually squirt some of that mousse onto like a mascara brush or eyebrow brush and then brush it onto your eyebrows. And I find that with the application, you get more precise application and it's less messy and you don't get undesired hair growth elsewhere near your eyes. Okay guys, that was a quick rundown on Minoxidil, some you know information and how I recommend using it and some other tricks and tips. I hope you found this video helpful and if you want Want me to talk more about minoxidil whether topically and orally for hair thinning please let me know in comments below i mean minoxidil is pretty versatile and often is best when it's combined with other treatments for treating hair loss and hair thinning so if you certainly want more information on this topic i'd be happy to make more just let me know in the comments below once again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time